What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the guest show on the Active Life Podcast. I cannot wait for you to listen to today's show. I can't wait for you to listen to today's show. I have Aaron Hind, the CEO and founder of Life Aid Beverage Company. You might know about Fit Aid, but there's a lot you don't know about Aaron Hind. And on today's show, Aaron, during a time of, frankly, unprecedented uncertainty, was down to sit down with me and talk about what he believes you need to be thinking about and you need to be doing to make sure that you can stand out in the crowd. We are in the moment of all of this uncertainty around what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get people's attention? How do I give people value? What is the most pressing thing for me to do right now? And a lot of people listening to this are going to be thinking to themselves, well, how can somebody like Aaron Hind, who owns a multi-million dollar company, relate to what I'm going through in my gym right now? Guess where Aaron Hind gets much of his business from? Gyms, buying cases and cases of his fitted. Spartan race, being out there at the big races, activating new clients. How many gyms are open and how many Spartan races are running right now? The answer is damn near close to zero. So a huge hit to Aaron's business is what we're all dealing with right now. And he still took the time during this momentary crisis to sit down and talk about what he's thinking about, how you should think, how to get in alignment with what you believe is important and make sure that you're delivering huge value on that. Passion and ignorance. Those are two words that Aaron used on the show that I think are so important right now. Have passion for what you do and be aware that you are ignorant about what you must do. We only know what we know and what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And we don't know what is going to happen five minutes from now. Do the best you possibly can with the information that you have and be willing to be wrong, be ready to pivot, and always keep moving forward. Words of wisdom from Aaron Hind. I'm going to get you to the interview right now. All right, Aaron Hind, welcome to the guest show. Thanks for joining me. Doc, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So I think that I might be talking to the number one person who if people said to me, hey, who do you want to hear what to do right now from? It might be you. And the reason why I say that, <laughs> the reason why I say that is because you have multiple times in your career now through your chiropractic clinic and through Life Aid, been able to take what I would consider like a loud cafeteria and say something that nobody else was hearing or say it in a certain way that everybody was able to stop what they were doing and pay attention to you. And I think never before in yeah. our history has been more important to differentiate. So do you mind yep. just taking a moment and giving people a little bit of background on you and then we can get into how they can all differentiate right now? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Aaron Hine, president, co-founder of Life Aid Beverage Company. Most people know us uh, by our Fit Aid line, uh, although right now people are getting to know us by our Immunity Aid line as well. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I, I had a, a successful sports chiropractic clinic for a decade here in Santa Cruz uh, County. That's what got me really into the fitness community, introduced me to, uh, to CrossFit as I was treating a lot of the CrossFit HQ uh, um, employees and, and uh, some of the top athletes when they were coming through there. And, uh, you know, been in the gym business my entire life and, uh, you know, personal trainer through college and, and chiropractic college and really enjoyed that. And, uh, you know, you know, why life aid? Well, you know, if you rewind back to 2011, you know, energy drinks were on fire. Uh, you just had uh, coconut water and, and kombucha just hitting the scene. And, uh, I'd have athletes coming into my office, you know, with a, with a monster or something like that. And I'd be like, look, you got to get off that stuff. That's going to cause adrenal fatigue and 
you know, look at the sugar content in there. These artificial sweeteners are horrible for you. And they said, okay, fine. I'll get on to something else. Well, what, do you, what do you want me to drink? And, you know, kombucha and, and coconut water were, uh, for lack of a better term, really hippy dippy and very much an acquired taste. And there was nothing that really had the cool, sexy hipness of the energy drinks, the functionality that the energy drinks uh, contained, but were actually good for you. And so it was really out of ignorance and passion. We, we, uh, Orion and I started Life Aid in, in 2011. Well, I think the maybe one of the most relevant things you said there was that it was out of both ignorance and passion. And what I think is important about that for people to understand is that you, when you say ignorance, I imagine what you mean is you didn't know what you were up against when you started. You just figured that this, the space needed this. Is, is that right? Or is there more to it? No, that's it. Yeah. We had no, no experience whatsoever in the beverage space. Um, it was, you know, we were totally ignorant to what it takes uh, to get a beverage company off of the ground. And that ignorance really, uh, was, uh, a secret weapon, you know, I mean, if we were beverage experts, uh, it would have been a much different ride, a, a different approach to, to our marketing, a different approach to our rollout. And we would have likely failed. Well, and I, I always find that kind of stuff so interesting, right? Because you look now and all these companies are out there trying to get, you know, seed money to get their company started before they've even sold anything to anybody. And, you know, I, I fell into a similar mistake. I took a bunch of investors on to open up my gym before I even knew what the gym business was going to be like. And that was a mistake looking back. So you guys have gone from the other company who was selling stuff to my members when I was a CrossFit gym owner to the company Mm -hmm. that represents the beverage space for health and wellness. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, golfers drank your stuff with your golf aid, you have CrossFitters and trainers buying Fit Aid. You have Focus Aid for people who are studying. You have Immunity Aid for people who are trying to improve the nutrients that are in their body so that they can have a better chance against everything from the common cold to what we're dealing with right now. How did you guys cut through the white noise and become the brand? Yeah, good question. I mean, our platform is vitamins. You know, you'll actually enjoy drinking. So it's very congruent with you know, my background as a chiropractor and, and working with people on their health and, and fitness and well-being. Um, you know, how did we stand out amongst the crowd? Well, we chose a single target market. I mean, most people, when they go into an industry, they want to be, so if, say I'm a gym owner, I open my doors, I want to be everything to everybody. So you're a competitive athlete, come on in. You're a child, come on in. You're a geriatric, come on in. Like, I'm going to serve everybody here. And it's the exact wrong approach. You need to attract who you're going to attract and repel who you're going to repel in business. And how you do that, how you get very clear on that is by choosing a single target market and going deep in that market. Orion and I met each other in a CrossFit gym in 2009. You know, we were very early uh, to, to the CrossFit game. And so it was very natural for us to go deep into that single target market of CrossFit because we knew the market, it was emerging, it was growing. We were part of the community. We are part of the community. And so it was a very natural fit for us to go deep into that market. People go, well, why CrossFit? That's way too niche. We had advisors, people in the beverage industry saying, why fit aid for CrossFitters? You should have sport aid and have it for all sports, you know? And then that was, that's the mentality of, you know, people, uh, industry veterans is like, Oh, you got to go really wide. No, you got to narrow, you got to narrow, you know, from being a, a chiropractor, I know from being a chiropractor, you could have, and, and, and any coaches or gym owners out there know you could have a hundred clients that are the best people in the world and like give you energy, they're energy chargers, not drainers. You love working with them. And then that one bad apple comes in and just sucks the life out of the gym or sucks the life out of your clinic and just takes up all your time. And is always complaining, always bitching never getting results that they're, that you want them to get. Right. That is not the right fit for you or the right fit for them. Why the hell are you trying to cater to that person? Fire them. You know, it's the best thing for the community. And so not trying to be everything to everybody and going really deep in a single target market is the number one key in business. Well, so Aaron, you're talking about going deep into a single market and I imagine football players could buy fitted, you know, Baseball players could buy a fit aid. So when you describe going deep into a market and I talk to gym owners and coaches all the time, one of their questions for me is always, 
it isn't somebody who wants to get fit in my market. And I would, I would suggest that that's akin to the football player who, yeah, they can drink fit aid. You're just not going to market to the football player. Can you describe the difference? Yeah. And it's not that you never market to them. So what I'm talking about, when you go deep into a single target market, you go really deep until you have complete saturation in that market. And then for growth, you look at adjacent markets that make sense. For, so for us, for example, at, at LifeBase, deep with fit aid into CrossFit, we only sold to gyms and only sold online for five years, five years, no grocery stores, no nothing, just gyms and, and primarily CrossFit. So we went from only CrossFit to after a few years, we started selling into other uh, uh, functional fitness gyms like Fit Body Boot Camp and, and some Orange Theory and that type of thing. Okay. And then after we really were deep in the gym market as the go-to recovery drink, then we started looking at things like, okay, well, Spartan Race makes a lot of sense now and going deep into that vertical. So my point when I say choose a single target market, choose a single target market at a time, okay? So if you're a gym owner and you want to go, okay, we're going to train athletes, competitive athletes, you go deep into that and competitive athletes. And then it's like, okay, we are the premier gym for competitive athletes. Now... Let's add a module. Let's add some coaches. Let's add some classes around maybe master's athletes or teen athletes. Like what's the next adjacent market and you slowly move out. The challenge is when you try to go wide and, 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 and please all of those markets at once, then you please nobody and you go out of business. Yeah. It's kind of like getting the, I used to have a mentor who talked to me about the, the steam wheel on the back of one of those steam boats where it was like in the beginning, it's really hard to turn the flywheel. And then over time, it becomes easier and easier. Now, all you got to do is kind of add a little bit of momentum to it. And when you get to the point at which you can just slap it and keep it going, then you can start at the same time putting effort into starting another wheel, which could be a different market with the same product. It's a great analogy. And we talk a lot uh, around here around, you know, the ATM of life where, I believe that, you know, life will continue to pay you dividends is is just like an ATM machine does. As long as you have a positive balance, the A is for alignment, alignment with yourself, alignment with your team, T for trajectory, M stands for momentum. Once you have that momentum, continue to do all the little things that got you the momentum and, and be conscious of ways to fuel that momentum. But you're right. Once you have that momentum, you know, then you can take that and go, okay, let me, now it's time to go into an adjacent market. Let me apply, you know, these principles that really got us here. This new market will onboard that new market and then create systems around that. And then you have momentum in two markets and then you can add a third and so on and so forth. Yeah. That's, that's such deeper advice. than I think most people are going to take it for on the show, but I hope that those who take it all the way in understand how valuable it is. And I love that acronym. I never, I didn't realize you were going into a legitimate acronym, the ATM of life. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Alignment. You have to, everything starts with alignment. You know, I mean, this is something that I am extremely conscious of personal alignment. What are you doing when no one else is looking? You know, what are you doing? What if everything you did showed up on the front page of the New York times? Would you be okay with that? Are you in alignment with yourself? Are you in alignment with yourself? And once you have personal alignment, then you it opens up, the universe opens up to have alignment with your significant other, with your kids, with your business partner, with your team, with your staff, okay? And having all of that alignment, I love Henry Ford's quote that says, when everyone is moving forward together, success will take care of itself when everyone's moving forward together. What does that mean? When everyone's moving forward together, that's alignment. You know, when everyone's in alignment, success will take care of itself. So it all starts with alignment. You know, that's the foundation to, you know, moving this forward to getting eventually that momentum. For sure. And I see a lot of people burn out by trying the tactics that drive a, a business forward but that are out of alignment with what they want their business to be. So they reach mild profitability or even great profitability, but they hate their business because it's out of alignment with what they believe is important. So I think that's such great advice and I thank you for it. Yeah. I mean, those type of businesses, they may see short-term success, but they won't see success in the long term. They will not be a business that is, you know, built to last. Um, uh, An example would be, 
you're a gym owner and you eat like shit and you're 50 pounds overweight. Like you could create marketing systems and stuff to get uh, members in the door, but eventually people are going to be like, wait a second, something's not right here. He's a fat fucker. And you know, they're trying to get us healthy. This doesn't make sense. See the same thing as a chiropractor. Like if you're a chiropractor and you're out of shape or you're a smoker, I mean, come on. Like, why would I be going to you? Same thing with medical doctor. It blows me away. I'm like, you're a medical doctor, yet you're out of shape or you're smoking or you have all these bad habits. Incongruent, out of alignment. Yeah, I agree with you. It's, 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 it's wild. But to, <laughs> to, to move on from that and into more current times, like I said to start the show, I think it would be very surprising to me and to most people if you were a gym owner right now and or a chiropractor and coronavirus hits and now everybody yep. is out there trying to give their advice to the point at which it's very cool that there are so many people who are trying to be valuable to people at this time. The reality though is it's becoming just a different loud cafeteria. How would you separate yep. yourself? Yeah, great question. And I'm, you know, fielding multiple calls a day with friends and, and that are gym owners specifically about this. First off, you have to, we all have to stand firm at the gates of our mind. You know, if you're getting garbage in, it's going to be garbage out. Do not let the media, the new, the quote unquote news, you know, the newspaper, the internet pollute your mind. Okay. You got to stay true to, uh, you, you know, wh what you believe is the true north here. Stick with your daily routines, you know, your morning routine. Don't let the e your email or the news hijack your day. Okay, so that's the step number one. Like, you got to stick with the routine. Routine is key through these type, type times. Two, all of a sudden, all my income shut off, right? My, my gym is forced to close. A um, couple things. Anything that you can do. So in times like this, and in all marketing, but especially in times like this, the key is to enter the conversation currently going on in your customer's mind. Okay. Enter the conversation that's already going on in their mind. I know I'm out. You know, I'm, I came to the office today. I went to the grocery store yesterday. Fear is palpable right now. Like people are afraid. It's very bizarre. You know, they're very afraid. Um, they're, they're, they're uh, financially strained. Some people, you know, are out of work in, in certain industries have just completely shut down. Uh, people's 401ks have, have, have gone down their retirement accounts. So there's a lot of fear right now and people aren't standing guard at the gates of their mind. You know, they're letting all of this in and it's affecting their nervous system. So knowing that, how do we adjust our communication? I believe that in times like this, people are subconsciously longing for someone with their best interests in mind to come and grab them by the hand and take a leadership role, you know, let them know what to do. So there's a unique opportunity here for doctors, for gym owners, you know, for business owners to be that light, be that hope. So number one, guide input in, you know, make sure you're sticking with your routine. Number two, be a positive influence in these people's lives. Everything is they're hearing is negativity. You want to be positive, okay? So you, 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 I, I always talk about, you know, be an energy charger, not an energy drainer. Same thing we were talking about earlier with that one patient, energy sucker, right? You want to be an energy charger. So you become something that people look up to right now. This is a great opportunity for gym owners to create different monetization models that maybe they never considered or you know, they, they weren't used to, I would immediately start online classes right now where I open up a zoom account and maybe do classes a couple times a day. Think about it. Everybody's at home. Everybody's anxious. What do they need more than anything right now? They need to move and exercise, right? They are stir crazy. They're stuck at home. They're trying to work. Kids are running around in the back yelling. They're having to deal with that. Like I need to exercise. So I'm going to guide my community towards continuing to get in shape while at home. Okay. So if your normal gym memberships, 200 bucks a month, maybe you see if we can continue that and we're going to do on uh, online home training, but open up classes every day, get everybody on zoom. You know, all you need is your laptop, a tablet, or hook it up to your TV 
and start running classes where you're doing functional fitness, body weight, you know, no special equipment needed classes from home. This is a great time to integrate some nutritional counseling. It's really tempting sitting at home like, oh, I'm going to just munch on these Cheetos for the next two hours while I'm working, right? If you don't have a nutrition component, you know, this is a great way to create more value and, and an, uh, uh, an upsell potentially to add a nutrition component to it. Um, really focusing on keeping people's stress levels down. So if you don't have any mindfulness aspect to your business, this is the best time to integrate mindfulness, breathing techniques, Wim Hof, meditation, a uh, yoga aspect to it. The best thing you can do for your clients right now is keep their chronic stress levels low and keep them moving so it keeps their immune system strong, right? So continue to engage the community. Don't engage them like, oh, God, the sky is falling and we're going to be out of business. I don't know if we'll be able to reopen. That's scarcity mindset. There will be thousands and thousands of millionaires and billionaires that come out of this time right now, out of this you know, tragic time that we're in because they took a leadership role. They had an abundance mindset. They were focused on providing value for their community. And they were stepping up to the plate in a big way when people needed leadership. I love all of that. And I think to, to point all of that home, there are things that as gym owners, you probably have the chance to do as coaches, you probably have the chance to do that. You're not thinking about because all that you're thinking about is doing what you've always done in a different platform, but you're married. Yes, Aaron, you have kids. Yep. Right. Two kids. So right now my wife is at home with my kids and the nanny, but she's home all day long. And one of the things that occurred to me is if gyms could get in the mind of their client, like you described before, have the conversation that's already going on in the client's mind. What is one thing that they're longing for right now? Especially if both parents are at home, there isn't a nanny. How about like 45 minutes of free time where the kids are occupied? Why not host, right. why, yeah. why not host kids classes for different age groups throughout the day so that parents can be like, Oh my God. Yeah. I would definitely pay $10 a day to have my kids occupied for an hour. So a hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's another great opportunity. Yeah. And, and that's something that, you know, once that hits the mom's group in your town, forget about it. People who didn't even know that this gym existed in this town is now your potential clients when this whole thing is over. And I think that there's a lot of people who will probably will listen to this podcast and say, yeah, really cool. Sean Pastuch is talking about how he thinks people need to be thinking but he has a company that is big enough to not have to worry about this. Not true. And Aaron Hind is talking about how he thinks people need to be thinking about this, but he has a company that's big enough that people that he doesn't need to worry about this. Also not true. You sell a ton of product to CrossFit gyms, to orange theories, to fit body boot camps that people are not allowed to step inside of right now. So what did you right. guys, I mean, yeah. and, and for people who don't know, I hear all the time, People talk about, you know, oh, wealthy people, blah, 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 blah. And it's like the good and the bad. If you don't have a lot of money, you're a good person. If you have a lot of money, you're a bad person. And it's, it's because they, they don't understand what you need to place a pre-order for, for example. And what happens now when your margins are X percent and you can't sell 60% of your product for a month and a half, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. You, despite all of this going on right now, I don't know what percent of your business fit aid is, and I don't need to, um, took time out of your day to talk to me about how other people can be thinking. How are you thinking? What are you guys doing at life aid to offset potential losses of people not being able to buy fit aid in the gyms? You're a hundred percent accurate. I mean, look, the gym uh, channel is a major contributed to our revenue and it's taken a huge hit. I mean, you know, how many gyms are, are forced to close? So given that situation, it would be easy for me to like, what can we pull back on the gym channel? How can we save money here? Instead, we're going to be doubling down on the gym. We are coming up with a plan, which will be launched in the next few days to give gyms uh, monetarily support gyms and how it will likely work is, if your members that were normally buying our products uh, in the gym end up buying them at home because they're working out with you and doing some online classes, we're going to be giving $15 of every case they buy 
directly back to you to help support you during these hard times. I know this too shall pass. I know that the more I can provide value and support our core community, which is the gym community, the more that they'll remember that when we get through this whole thing. So I don't care if we take a hit in the short term. We're already taking a hit. We're going to take more of it. That's okay. Because this too shall pass. As far as, you know, the comment on, you know, rich people, poor people, we're all just people. We're all just doing the best that we can to support ourselves, our families, our, our network, our friends, our community, right? Dudes are just dudes. Chicks are just chicks. I've hung out with, I've been as broke as you can possibly broke be in this country. And I've been, hang, I've gotten invited and hung out with the biggest A tier celebrities at their houses. Let me tell you, dudes are dudes. Chicks are chicks. Period. Period. <laughs> we all have the same challenges. We all have the same, you know, anxieties and fears. It's how we do deal with it. Are we taking action or are we sitting on the sidelines? Are we pointing the finger at everybody else saying it's all external? Or are we pointing at the fingers at ourselves saying, get your ass off the couch. What can I do about it right now? I love that. How are you, first of all, that idea for you to be able to donate money back to the, and I don't want to say donate back. It's really just allocating funds for where they would have been otherwise. <laughs> When, when those yep. gyms are otherwise going to potentially lose it because they're buying from you direct because they still can. How are you going to know where people work out? And I want to just commend you. I think that's a phenomenal idea for you guys to be doing. Yeah. So, uh, well, the back end of it will, when, uh, we'll send out a uh, notification and on our private Facebook page and an email to our gym saying, look, if you're closed right now, log into your account. Uh, we'll generate a unique code just for you and your gym, share it with your community and any products they buy from us, make sure they plug that code in uh, on, at checkout and we will keep a tally and once a month while during your closure and during this crisis, we're going to be cutting you a check to help support you financially through this transition. It's so cool. And I want people out there who are listening to this to understand the, the levels of that, that at least that I'm, I'm hearing and please correct me if I'm mistaken on any of them. The first level is the gym who right now is trying to figure out how to make things work is going to have a, you know, a life buoy thrown out to them by a company who they have a business relationship with. That's going to build brand loyalty when somebody else comes in and says, hey, we'll sell you our cans for 20% or 20 cents less than fit aid. They're going to be like, yeah, cool. I'm not interested. And you don't end up in the commodity war. That's one. Two, right. those members are going to keep buying cases for themselves after the fact online in some cases. And they're still going to buy fit aid from the gym out of convenience when they want to hang out and kick it after class. And so what ends up happening is people who maybe before didn't buy as much fit aid end up buying more and the gym goes back to where they were, if not more. And so does fit aid as a company. Are all of those things accurate? Absolutely. I mean, look, I know the power of reciprocity. I mean, our intent is truly to support the gyms. And is there a, a strategic byproduct of that uh, of intent of supporting the gyms? Of course there are. You know, the gym stays open and they continue to be an account of ours. So it all goes full circle. Like the worst thing we can do right now is go into scarcity mode and, you know, lock our doors and, and think the sky is falling. You know, now is the time to press. Now is the time to, to provide value to your community, to take that leadership role, to give back as much as you can afford to give back. And really, it's, you know, it's paying it forward is what it is. You're paying it forward. The universe will provide. It always comes full circle. Yeah, one of the conversations that we just had with our uh – our most top end clients. We work with gyms and what we call our pro path. And they're the gyms who we're trying to turn into the healthcare clinics of the future. And with the conversation we just had with them was, do you, do you watch the UFC or any kind of fighting Aaron? Occasionally. Okay. So the analogy that we gave them was in a fight, what oftentimes happens is it ends with one person punching another and the referee pulling that person off. Right. You've seen that. You can see that image. Yep. So what, sure. we, what we described is that right now, most people are the guy on the ground or the woman on the ground with their hands over their head, waiting for the referee to come pull circumstances off of them. 
as opposed to mm -hmm. figuring out, okay, I'm getting punched a lot by circumstances right now. How do I throw a jab and create some space? And we're asking them to figure out how do you throw jabs and hooks back to create some space? And I think that's what you're describing here is what can you do? So often we focus on the negation. I can't be open right now. I won't. I shouldn't. I, you know, all these negations. Let's focus on what we can do, what we are doing, what we will do. Let's bring it back to the affirmative. Okay. There's, I, I, I was talking on Instagram the other day, you know, this concept of circle of concern, right? The circle of concern. We all, you know, most of us have this massive circle of concern. Oh my God, coronavirus might kill us. Oh my God, global warming, you know, the earth's going to end in the next year, 10 years. Oh my gosh, you know, so-and-so's in, uh, president. And, and, oh, the stock market is tanking. Circle of concern. Fuck circle of concern. <laughs> Fuck circle of concern. Focus on circle of influence. Circle of influence. What can I do? What can I do? Well, I can keep, I can wash my hands. I can keep my immune system strong, right? I can keep moving. I can keep exercising. I can uh, eliminate single-use plastic out of my household, like what we have done here at Life Aid Anna and personally. You know, I can, you know, help the environment that way. I can, you know, uh, stay strong to a, a long-term investing outlook for the, for the market, knowing that, you know, the cycles happen. Like, what can you do? Focus on your circle of influence and not your circle of concern, and you will make it, not only make it through, you will thrive in this time. I agree. I think people are looking for people to influence them positively. You know, it's, it's the, they are. what, what they you are. described before, you know, the, the quote news and, and, and all of the outlets that people are getting their information from, it's a, this is what you need to worry about. This is what you need to avoid, as opposed to, this is what you can do to put value into the world. And I have a question for you because you strike me as somebody who may, or I think you may relate to this. I believe that there's energy that everybody is throwing out into the world. And I believe that right now, the, if we, if we picture ourselves like magnets, if everybody is throwing out the same pole, the same polarity and it's fear, then the right. people who throw out confidence, certainty and calm are going to be like the super magnets attracting everybody to them. I'm writing that down. That's a great analogy. I love that. I love that. It's, it's a hundred percent accurate. Absolutely. Absolutely. So knowing what the vast majority of people, you know, what that, what they are being exposed to, what they are absorbing, what that magnetism they're giving off, you want to be the exact opposite. You know, you want to attract, you want to be the shepherd, you know, now is the time, to be the good shepherd, bring that leadership role, you know, be firm when you need to keep the wolves away, guard your flock. Mm -hmm. And I think that right now, as we record this, it is Thursday. I'm not even sure what the date is. The 16th, 17th, 18th, what are 18th. And I think we're early in this whole thing right now. And people are still fairly calm. There's some panic, but it's, it's, especially in the fitness industry, it's, it seems to be a lot of what can we do? Ultimately, if this lasts, I believe that people are going to be tested. That mindset is going to be tested. And you, having been through the really, really, really poor to invited to A-list celebrities' homes, started at least two companies that I know of, both of which did well, um, you have the scars and the bruises of the past that can remind you that this is just going to leave another scar, None of these previous scars killed me. Why would I think that this one is going to? So I related to the idea that, you know, the Orthodox Jewish person doesn't try to avoid shrimp. They just, they, they don't eat shrimp. It's their thing. The person who is very, very active and fit doesn't try to avoid being sedentary. They just, they couldn't possibly do it. So you're the type of person who immediately strikes me as a, what do you mean panic? I'm not going to panic. It's not what I do. I'm going to keep moving forward. Yep. How does somebody who doesn't have the scars and the bruises of past develop them fast now so that if this drags out, they find themselves in the position of, what do you mean panic? I, I would never do that. 
It is a great question. <clears throat> so um, there is a cycle that we all go through beginning with our belief system and we can rewind all the way back between zero and seven years of age where a lot of this belief system was instilled upon us when we were still in download mode and not in rational decision-making mode. We have a belief system that guides our thought process. Okay. Our thought process guides our verbiage, our vernacular, the words that come out of our mouth are based on the thoughts going through our head. The words that come out of our mouth dictate our actions. Our actions over time equal results. Those results, positive or negative, reinforce a belief system. And around and around and around we go. That's why there are people that spiral up, no matter what the circumstances, and there are people that spiral down because this is a dynamic process. So this circle is think of it, you know, it, as it's spiraling, it's going one way or another. It's never neutral. It's never neutral. So how do we break the cycle if you're on a downward spiral is basically what you're asking. There's two ways. It's impossible to change. I believe it's impossible to ch just change your belief system without having the results to back it up, right? So there's two areas you can interject here in this beliefs, thoughts, words, actions, results over time, beliefs. One is in your words, your words coming out of your mouth. So there's a, a concept, you know, abracadabra that many of us are familiar with, you know, everyone's familiar with because it's like abracadabra, that's the magician, what the magician says, right? Back up, you know, the origins of the word, if you look it up, Aramaic, it comes from Aramaic, so think of Jesus Day's language. With my words, I create. That's what this means. Abracadabra. With my words, I create. I don't speak Aramaic. I'll bet if I did speak it, it even really translates to with my thoughts, I create. But with my words, I create. Okay? So I might be thinking a certain way, but I can control what comes out of my mouth. I can control the sky is falling or I can control that, hey, this too shall pass. Things are going to get better. There's opportunities here. Even though I might be thinking fucked up shit. Right? <laughs> I can control the words that are coming out of my mouth and I can control number two, the actions that I'm taking or the inaction, right? Those are the two areas where you can break the cycle right now. If you're on a negative spiral, be conscious of the words that are coming out of your mouth. Abracadabra with my words, I create, you will manifest in sometimes very real time, your reality, positive or negative. I mean, my ability right now to manifest my own reality in real time is, is uh, there is no lag anymore. It's not an hour I have to wait or a week or a month or a year. Like instantly think about somebody, they call me on the phone right then. I get a text, I get an email, whatever it is. I, I write down in my five minute journal, three things that'll help make today great. You know, they're coming to reality that day typically, okay? We have power as humans, human beings. And if you think about it, you know, uh, depending on if you come from a religious background, you have some commonalities here, like made in the image and likeness of God. Well, think about that for a second. If you truly believe into that, or if you've ever believed that, what does that actually mean? You know, image and likeness, image and likeness. That means we have this immense power that most of we we're not even scratching the surface on to change things to manifest reality think of the resilience of the human race since the beginning of time like we have survived so many things we have had challenges way bigger than we're facing today and persevered through this you know we have leaders that were were former slaves were enslaved that it came up to lead nations like it's amazing what humanity is capable of abracadabra change your your words change your actions and then guess what when you have different actions, positive actions, you're taking action over time, that equals results. And when you start getting good results, you're like, huh, this is interesting. Those results will start to wear on you in a very positive way. And they'll change your belief system. Like, wow, maybe this is possible. And all of a sudden, this negative belief system or the scarcity belief system that you had starts to change to an abundance belief system. And then it starts to change what's going on in your head, the repetitive thoughts on your mind. 
And then the words coming out of your mouth are even with more conviction because you actually believe it, you think it, you feel it. And those words turn into even more convicted action. And more convicted action turns into better results over time, which continue to manipulate your belief system. This is how I got myself from totally bankrupt 10 years ago. Bankrupt. You know, still owed $260,000 in student loans. Went all in during the uh, how financial crisis. I we thought I was a real estate investor, like a complete idiot. Right? <laughs> you know, like everybody, oh, oh yeah, buy real estate, you know. And, and got myself so deep in a hole, so deep in a hole as a high income earner, but still completely and lost everything. And when I am in a total funk, I'm a loser. I'm a failure. I'm in my early thirties. I should be on top of the world right now. And I'm fucking bankrupt. I'm a piece of shit to wait a second. Abracadabra. I'm just going to create a bigger piece of shit here. Like, Okay, this is a cheap lesson in the grand scheme of things. This is a cheap lesson in the grand scheme of things. You know, the obstacle is the way. This is the only way forward, right? I needed this in my life. And in retrospect, I needed it in my life. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for that experience. It was necessary. So don't look at the obstacles as woe as me. Look at it as this is necessary for me to get to the next level right now. That is so profound for people. It, it, the thing that, that most struck my attention in all of this is that it all goes back to the first thing that you talked about, which is that it's about alignment. And people are in alignment with their beliefs. Whether they realize it or not, you are always in alignment with your beliefs because your action represents what you really believe to be true. Whether it's what you want to believe or not is a totally different story. So what you're describing is you need to be able to change your beliefs or leverage your beliefs to be able to take the radical action that is necessary in times when radical action is necessary, which I frankly believe is always. Absolutely. Imagine this process in, uh, in times that aren't acute in times that aren't, you know, kind of more, uh, emergency situations. Like it is, powerful it's powerful all the time it's powerful all the time and we are I, I remember somebody told me once that life is like a salmon swimming upstream if you stop putting in the effort if you just stop the tide the the, the, the force of the river is going to take you back out to the ocean you have to constantly be moving forward you need to constant there is no end game here you know we're spiraling into infinity eventually we're all going to die right i believe the soul you know lives on or you know we know that energy can't be created or destroyed so it, it, you know there's something that goes on right what do you want that infinitely to look like do you want that to be spiraling infinitely into abundance or do you want that to be spiraling infinitely into scarcity and despair because that's what i really believe hell is it's a spiral to scarcity and despair based on really the ego, you know, if you would strip it all away, it's like, what is the essence of scarcity? What is the essence of scarcity? It's the ego. I had this thought the other day. I'm like, it's the ego. All of scarcity is the ego. Oh, I didn't get credit for this. Well, if there's a infinite abundant credit, then who cares? Because I'll get credit another time. There's not enough money. He ripped me off. If there's infinite money, which there is, they're just creating it on a computer. For those that don't know, it's on the back way. <laughs> there's infinite money. If there's infinite money. Then who cares? I'll get money in the future. Like all of scarcity is based on ego. So it kind of all ties back together. Like, okay, how do I keep my ego in check? This is the biggest thing I struggle with right now. Is like, you know, how do I, how do I keep my ego in check? I'm, you know, when I, when I'm quick to re respond, sometimes it's like based on uh, the ego coming out and not my, you know, calmer, rational, you know, uh, abundant mind. And, and so, you know, I think a lot of this comes back to the ego. Yeah, I can, I can attest to that, that I'm still, I believe a bit behind you and your ability to control that and stay the calm, cool, collected Aaron Hind. And from time to time, I would say, I'm at 95% better than where I was when I was always out looking for an argument or a fight or a conflict. 95% of the time I can put my ego aside, but there's still that 5% of like, Oh, I shouldn't have said that, but it's out in the world now. <laughs> You're ahead of me, brother. I'm at like 25% right now. I mean, it's, 
being conscious of it is step one. Being conscious of it is step one. And then it takes like anything, it's a process. All processes take time. You know, it takes practice. It takes time. It takes vigilance. It takes awareness, uh, first and foremost. Well, so I want to kind of tie this whole thing up by going back towards the beginning where you talked about ignorance and passion, because I think that right now this is going to come out during coronavirus hysteria, even if we're allowed to go back into work because there's still going to be the, well, who has jobs who can come pay me? What's, what's, what's happening now? So I think that the mistake that many people are making is they are assuming that they know anything and by assuming that you know something, you take an action. And then when that action fails, you're like, Oh God, I don't know anything. I'm going to fail everything. But if we can all approach this with the reality that we are ignorant to what we're supposed to do right now, because we've never been in this situation, we're ignorant to how, what we do is going to work. I mean, you're giving 15 bucks per case to gyms for every case that a member buys when they're at home. You might find that nobody buys a case. So you put all this effort into getting cases and money out to people and no one buys them. But if you're passionate about continuing to help the gym, then that's just another one of those cheap lessons you were talking about. And you move on to the next one. Yeah. I mean, look, Landmark has has a concept. We know what we know. We know what we don't know. But the, the biggest category is we don't know what we don't know. Right. So we're making decisions based on the, on the best information that we have, which could be accurate, could be accurate. It could be in that whole realm of, we don't know that we don't, what we don't know. So what we do is I think as entrepreneurs and business owners, like, okay, here's the goal in the upper right. Here's where we're at now. And let's drive right towards that goal. It's going to be a nice straight line. Anyone who's been around the block a few times knows that line is anything but straight. It zigs up and down and backwards sometimes and forward and up and down again. It is a very squiggly, crooked, jagged line to get to that point. But the point is you keep moving forward. You take the information, you test, you go, okay, get input back and then move forward again, move forward again. You can't give up. I love it. And I think that's an important lesson for people to know. And I think it's a great place to leave off because right now they're in a state of what do I do? And the answer is nobody really knows, but the answer is most definitely something. Most definitely it's something. Keep moving forward. That's right. Yes. One of my favorite podcasts uh, is is the Increase Your Impact podcast with Justin Sua. And he talked about um, Marcus Luttrell. I don't know if you've ever heard his podcast or you know this story, but the idea that Marcus Luttrell, the lone survivor, um, Operation Red Wings, whatever. I'm not going to get all off into the military weeds. He was finding himself unable to use his legs and he was laying face down and he drew a line about seven inches in front of his face, crawled across that line and did it again and did it again and did it again until he had crawled to a village that was miles away. And that's what we all need to do right now. Keep moving forward. It's It's a great piece of advice in all aspects of life. You know, if you think about it, what is unique to to all living organisms, whether you're a human being or an animal or on the cellular level? What is it? Movement. Movement. Aaron, man, it's been such a privilege to be able to interview you during a time like this and get real-time advice that, frankly, despite the fact that I'm over here putting service out for people and trying to provide my leadership, it's always valuable to get other people's input who you have respect for and I have immense respect for you, which you've done personally, business, all of it. And I want to thank you again. Thanks for having me on, brother. Where can our fans find you? Because I think that they should be following more about what you're talking about in general. Yeah, for me personally, I'm most active on Instagram at Aaron Hind, A-A-Ron, H-I-N-D-E. <laughs> and then obviously at FitAid for our brand at LifeAid, LifeAidBevCo.com. A-A-Ron, you snuck it in there. That's good. I like the joke. <laughs> There's a couple ways to spell it. I'm A-A-Ron. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Aaron. All right. That's going to be a wrap for this episode of the Active Life Podcast. And guys, remember, remember... If you are looking to enhance your fitness business, if you're sitting there thinking, man, I would love 
to be able to go on vacations. I would love to be able to take two weeks off and not have my business fall apart. And most importantly, most importantly, if you want to be a part of the movement that we are creating, facilitating, and seeing come to life, which is coaches and gyms becoming the healthcare clinic of the future, Helping people who've gotten hurt working out. Helping people who've been told they have to work out around that. Having people be told they're too old to do that. Find new hobbies. If hearing things like that for your clients is frustrating for you and you want to learn the skills to solve those problems and also get paid very well to do it, head to activelifeprofessional.com and let's get talking. Till then... Term Pro.